What's good, my YouTube connoisseur? It's your boy, the Bearded Sage, aka TBS, and I ain't talking no bullshit when I say Ooh. I'm at work and it's raining, and I hope you guys can hear me okay. <laughs> Today, we're about to get into this reaction by you already know who Young Dunn the Soft God. My high school love affair. I know we all done been there. Have you ever made a mistake because of the feelings you have for another person? Of course. Well, if you haven't, I've made enough for the both of us. This is a story telling you about one of the many poor decisions I've made because I caught some feelings, man. Here we go. So this story starts off in my junior year anatomy class in high school, just a few months after moving from Jamaica to America. So on this day, our teacher assigns the class a group project where everyone will have to partner up with one other person. Now, I don't remember if she asked me or I asked her or if the teacher picked our partners for us. But what I do remember is that I somehow ended up in a group with one of the hottest girls I've ever seen. Let's call her Ashley. So Ashley and did y'all used to like group assignments in school or did y'all rather work alone? Me, myself, I'm kind of a loner, so, you know, I ain't mad working alone. And plus, I ain't really want to give credit to other people when I did all the work. <laughs> you know how that is. I get together and start talking about anatomy shit, you know, because God Don't knows that I she had bad. not yet acquired the well, sauce. So I wasn't too confident to try and talk about much else. So fast forward to the end of class and by then we were cool. She was a cool chick and I was good enough, I guess, at the time. So class is over and it's time for me to walk home because I live like a mile away from school. Well, turned out that Ashley's mom picked her up every day after school from a park that was on the way to my house. How so convenient. naturally we end up walking together, which again, pretty hot chick totally fine with me so this became like our thing after every anatomy class i'd walk her to the park and then walk home and i don't remember much of any of our conversations but Too busy i do remember the day she turned to me and Put said so don how comes you don't have a girlfriend now i didn't know how to answer that i was just like I just don't. You see, I was not a very sought after dude in my early teens. You feel me? Same. Like between 12 and 15 were some pretty rough years. But after I moved to America and turned 16, I finally pulled out of that shitty period of puberty and my grown man physique and look started to take form. So I guess that girl started to notice. However, I had zero awareness that my stock had risen at all i was not seeing what they were seeing then she hits me with well i think that's kind of weird because you're like pretty cute and i'm just like what the fuck is happening right now is this totally hot girl hitting on me oh shit let's go so then i was like <laughs> you know what thanks I just noticed that think you're pretty cute too and just like that it was done we Let me both know if like captions or not but i'm gonna take them off for now all right Let's get back into it. What's that line? You know what line I'm talking about. There's like a line when it comes to talking to someone, right? On one side, it's totally platonic, straight friend zone. And then on the other side is where shit can get messy. So I walk her to the park and before I leave, I hug her goodbye like I usually do. But this time, I gave her a kiss on. What? Wait a minute cheek now on the east coast at least in florida kissing that's actually cheek? pretty normal for guys to kiss their female say, friends on the cheek. The but other this side, kiss was different side, it was like two side. seconds longer than just a normal goodbye kiss i basically sent a message and that message was next time i want more than a kiss on the cheek yes sir film. so fast forward to next time we're walking to the park and as we get there she says hey I told my mom to pick me up later so that we could work on the group project. So I was like, Demon timing. You already know. I ain't gonna call her, you know, a little thotty, but she might be a little thotty. You know what I'm saying? Cool. That's real responsible of you because we really need to get this project done, like in, in all seriousness. So I start walking over to a park bench to sit down and take out all my anatomy shit. And then she's like, we should work on it at your house. Uh so I'm like, hmm? come again she's like you live around here right let's let's just do it at your house so we went to the crib we get to my house 
empty. We go up to my room and lay out all the anatomy stuff on the floor. So there we are on the carpet did. talking about anatomy and it, it really was pretty much just me explaining everything to her because I was definitely the smart one. So you know I'm trying to explain this shit to her and then she just puts her head down. So I give her a nudge and then she nudges me back. Hmm? So I give her another nudge, you know, but like, but like more. She gives me one right back. Now, I didn't know much about girls at the time, but let's just say that nature has a way of telling a guy when the moment is right. So I just- How many of y'all females used to do that? Be honest. If you're a woman and you're watching this video right now, drop down in the comment below if you used to do that. Just reach over and, tell us and hug her like like real tight and then i let her go and then do. we're just laying there and she doesn't say anything now here's what i didn't tell you that i knew at the time she had a boyfriend some guy who graduated from her school like a year back so he was probably like 19 or 20 and we were wow. both 16. so i'm lying there thinking god Damn it, I'm an idiot. Why would I hug her like that? She has a boyfriend. Now this is all weird and she's never gonna wanna come over and so it's all fucked up. And then daddy. the next thing I knew, she was on top of me. So there we are, oh. looking at each other. Shit. And then she leans down and then we kiss. Just real quick. And then everything was still. We were just staring at each other, holding intense eye contact and okay. then let's just say that the only anatomy we did for the next hour consisted of passionate kissing and yes that's all that happened we made out and it was amazing you see at the time your boy was still a virgin so this was this was like like a huge deal okay i Shout wasn't even the thinking there. that there was Ain't more to be it. done and thus begins our high school affair because she still had a boyfriend and let's call him marcus and he a apparently knew people at our school although i never saw him didn't know what he looked like to me he was just this imaginary guy that was supposedly her boyfriend so the only thing that marcus affected was the fact that that we had to hide and make out at school we had spots that we'd meet up at during classes and, and just make out for like three minutes and then and then go back to class we only had one rule besides not telling anyone and that was that i wouldn't ask her to leave her boyfriend for me I mean, could I really get a sweeter deal than that? A hot girl that I was totally into wants to make out with me all the time and we never have any boyfriend-girlfriend drama. What is this magical world you speak of? But one day, it happened. I walked her to the park, kissed her goodbye, and films. as I was walking home, an arrow pierces my chest. She got me. Yep. I caught the feels um, i fell for it man because tragic. because of course i would up until very recently i was just that kind of guy to to you know just fall hard for girls and that always fucked me up so things continued business as usual making out during school walking her home texting all the time but i slowly started to hate her boyfriend eventually even i got right to the place that i promised i wouldn't get to i tried to get her to break up with her boyfriend but she said no she was not going to leave him. I realized that I was just something fun for her, which was which was cool at first when she was just something fun for me. But things had changed. Eventually, I had gotten fed up. My heart was starting to break over a girl that was in a relationship. I... I couldn't deal with that shit, so I cut it off. So by this point, a few people know about us. My cousins that I lived with, my two best friends, Justin and Manny, and this one other Jamaican dude from school, That's who way too many we'll call Sam, who was at the time a mutual friend to me, my older cousin Ty, and apparently, Marcus. So a what? couple days after Ashley and I break things off, my cousin barges yeah, no into Sam my room so. with a worried look on his face. So I'm like, yo, what's up? I, I had never seen Ty like that. He looks at me and says, he knows. I'm like, what? Who, who knows what? Marcus. Marcus knows about you and he's looking for you. At this point in time, it felt, it felt like my heart my heart just took a shit in my chest. My face was all hot, my mouth dried up, because by this time, I had gotten to learn a little bit more about Marcus. He was this big black dude, like 6'2", 6'3", built like a football player, and was apparently often caught on the wrong side of the law. Ashley even told me that he drives around with a gun. This was not a dude that I wanted to fuck with. So there I was, just sitting on the bed, scared, out of my mind because I now had a hit out on me by this thug ass nigga 
And yeah. he knew my name. All right, so that was the end of part one. We're going straight into part two. No lubrication. Let's go. So there I was, confused and afraid. How the fuck did I get myself into this situation? Apparently, Sam had told Ty that Marcus heard about me from one of his boys who saw Ashley coming over to my house one day after school. You see, I wasn't built to handle a situation like that. I grew up soft and sheltered, and I had never been in any form of confrontation at the scale that we are talking about. I mean, this was the kind of dude that would literally murder me if he had to chance a straight up thug like so now you about to get fucked up while i was at home playing minecraft and shit this nigga was out here selling grass and jumping niggas so shortly after learning about my imminent doom i went over to justin's house who lived just a couple houses down from me his house was pretty much the headquarters for a squad and shout out to minecraft you know i play minecraft too but i still fuck a nigga up don't get it twisted I get there, and shortly after, Manny shows up. I give them the story, and after they thoroughly roasted me for getting myself into this predicament over <laughs> Ashley, who, let's say, they didn't think she was, uh, worth this kind of trouble, to say See, they thought she was a thotty, too. I said that in the, in the first part. She might have been a little thotty. Least. But what can I say? She had plump pink lollipop lips and a oh, yes, fat sir. ass. Nigga, I was weak. So I'm weak. we come up with a plan. Basically, whenever possible, I would catch a ride home with one of my boys from the squad. Whenever that was impossible, I would be escorted home by at least one of my homies, usually Justin. I'm not kidding, fam. I hope y'all realize the extent of how serious this was. I mean, after all the roasting and jokes, Every single one of my boys was genuinely concerned for my safety. I fucked up. This went on for a whole week straight. Yeah, I watched my back. Loud ass motorcycle. Y'all heard that? There it go again. All right, I think it's gone now. Like a hawk. I didn't trust anyone besides my boys because like i said marcus was close with a lot of dudes from our school he was apparently a star athlete when he was a student so he had connections on just about every athletic team one day about a week after i learned that my days were numbered as i was leaving school who do i see pull up in the parking lot what marcus fucked up well, it wasn't goddamn Santa Claus, my nigga. The moment I saw him, I ran and took cover behind a column. Yeah, I knew yeah. that he didn't see me, so I just stood there and waited for him to leave. I must have stood there for what felt like 20 minutes. Wow. I was literally starting to get sick from all the constant stress that this situation put me under. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. Shit, I don't even know if I... I don't even know if I could jerk off. What? Who sent me a message on TikTok? Man, you couldn't jerk off. All right, okay, that's a, that's a lie. I probably, I probably oh. most definitely, still definitely, for sure did that. But, but you get, you get the point. I, I get you, my nigga. I get you. Just wanted it all to end. Another week or so goes by, and slowly I started to worry less and less. I figured that if he really wanted to get to me, and he really knew who I was, then he would have jumped me by now. Eventually, I managed to relax about the whole. St See, now he don't drop his guard. Now Marcus finna pull up. I bet you that's what's finna happen. Never drop your guard. Situation. It was finally basketball season, I was over Ashley, and things started to feel normal again. A few days later, my basketball team had a home game in the evening. I was a varsity starter, and although I was still pretty tr- Is that Marcus in the back? Over there chilling? Crash at that point compared to how good I was when I stopped playing basketball three years later I still had a blast playing. It was my escape from all my worries So there I was it's about the third quarter and I'm sitting on the bench beside Manny who was also on the team So I'm sitting there and then Manny leans into me and says oh, Yo, Don don't look back, okay? This Marcus. And don't freak out. But Marcus is sitting right behind you. He's a couple rows back in the stands. Don't 
look back. But I think today's you gotta the look day, back. Bro. But don't worry, I got you. So it's come to this. <laughs> this is how it all ends. <laughs> this nigga is gonna beat my ass on my own fucking basketball court in front of my schoolmates, my team, my friends, my family. <laughs> Of course. This was his plan all along. Bravo. Good sir. Bravo. Do you remember how when Kobe Bryant got charged for raping a girl? Wait, wait, hear me out. If you remember, when he was going through all of that, instead of crumbling under the pressure on the court, he rose to the occasion and played phenomenally. Almost as if to prove his very innocence on the court. Well, I did the opposite of that. You could see my guilt and anxiety with every move that I made. I was about to say, that's the difference. You guilty as fuck. <laughs> it must have been so bad that even the coach saw that I was way more ass than usual and ended up benching me for the rest of the game. Damn. Fast forward a little later, the game is over, and I don't even remember if we won or lost. I had bigger shit to worry about. So we all emerged from the locker room, and Manny and I are standing side by side. We decided that whatever I had come into me, we were going to face it together. We exit the building. Shout out to Manny. He a real nigga. Shout out to Manny. Shout out to people like Manny. And there he was, just talking to some of my teammates. But something told me that I wasn't gonna get my ass beat then. Manny and I stick around for a bit, and then he left. The, the nigga just left. And I am sure that he saw me. I was awashed with relief. Bruh. Look at that nigga face. I go home and run into Ty's room and I tell him everything that happened that night. And when I was finally done telling him the story, he bursts out laughing. He says to me, yo, bro, didn't Sam tell you, dog? What, what, what do you mean didn't Sam tell me? Ty looks at me and says, it was a prank, bro. Marcus never found out about you, you lucky ass nigga. And what? Wow. Bro, you know the precautions this nigga just took over a prank? This nigga had an escort. Escort service. Ride home. Just to avoid this dude, Marcus. And it was a prank. Wow. That might have been the first time in my life where I was equally furious and overwhelmed with joy at the same damn time. I gave Ty some shit stroke. about it, went into my room, locked my door and went to bed and that was the end of my high school love affair drama moral of the story don't don't be a hoe because because that shit never ends well don't be a thotty all right guys that's the end of the video thank you all for watching to the end i very much appreciate it please like comment and subscribe to the video i very much appreciate that as well and make sure you send me videos that you guys want me to react to on my social links. Uh, you can send them on Twitter. You can send them on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. You can send videos on TikTok. And I'll react to them. And I'll shout you guys out as well. Again, thank you all for watching. I'm out.